Hi guys, so this is the video where you will experience the power of awesomeness. I will be speaking to the famous blockchain developer, Alan. Those of you who don't know Alan, let me give you a brief uh, summary. Back in the days when I was implementing smart contracts and whitelists using mapping, I was very frustrated. I wanted to optimize the smart contract. I wanted to make sure that people who are using the smart contract that I'm writing are paying less gas fees or literally no gas fees at all. After looking at several different techniques, I decided Merkle Tree is the one, but I couldn't find any information out there. And fortunately, at the same time, Alan was writing a blog post and it was full of information. The way he articulated the blog post, the way he had structured it just made sense. And just by looking at it, I was able to implement it in the Broskis project, in the Wizard Pass project. Both projects benefited from a lot. So I'm really thankful to Alan and I'm, I'm now a big fan of him. You know, universe has its own ways. What happened was one day, one of my friends, he wanted help with the blockchain. It was a big project. So he introduced me to another blockchain developer. Turned out that blockchain developer was Alan. It's, it's like the world is completely round, I guess. <laughs> I started with the Merkle tree and ended up with Alan. And the first conversation I had with him was like, Alan, do you know I've already credited to you in one of my YouTube videos. My audiences will love you. I, I want you to come over and talk to me about how you wrote that uh, blog post. What, what, what was your thinking behind it? So let's watch this interview together. Hi, Alan, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good, Good. good. Finally meet you. Finally, finally, <laughs> I, I get a chance to meet the author of the famous blog post, which is using <laughs> my countries. First of all, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with everyone. Like, especially I, I benefited from it. I was able to build this project for Broskis. I think you have already seen the smart contract in which I've used. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so it's very well yeah. written. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So credits, credits to you, my friend. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. Before we start, I, I just want you to like give a short intro about yourself. If you if you can tell us like who, who are you actually? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. So. My name's Alan, uh, for those of you that don't know, and um, some of you may know me on Twitter as It's Kazo. And uh, to give kind of a little bit of background information on myself, I've been a software engineer for the better part of five years. Only towards probably mid-September last year is when I really started dipping my feet into most uh, into what most people would call uh, Web3 or the crypto space. I would say as of probably November 2021, is when I really decided to kind of go all in. And, um, you know, ever since making that change, I haven't really looked back too much. Um, I've really enjoyed learning every uh, step of the process, um, specifically relating to, you know, smart contract security, gas optimization, um, you know, smart contract design principles and best practices and pretty much everything. And it's been, you know, such a really great um, and enjoyable learning experience. That, that's that's amazing. I mean, it's really uh, interesting to hear about about your journey. Like, what, what's the most interesting thing that you found in like Web 3.0? What was it like that excited you? Uh, honestly, like, there's just so uh, much information out there. So I probably can't pinpoint it to like one specific thing that I've learned. But I think just the the general nature of the Web 3 space is what's definitely captured the most interest because there's just so many different principles you can learn about. And if you compare it to stuff that you're doing in like you know web 2 for example it's just so different in terms of how everything is structured but honestly I, I probably couldn't tell you one specific thing but definitely learning about like you know the whole nft minting process and specifically that area has been like a really really good learning experience that that's amazing so moving on to the the main meat of this conversation the reason I, i'm 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 <laughs> really big fan of you is like your blog post what, what was your inspiration behind like writing this uh using merkle tree for nft right yes um well i think the beauty of the nft boom which as we know happened towards the end of last year um was that it drew in a lot of people into the space um you know some of which were people who are generally interested in learning about you know blockchain technology and you know there was also people that you know saw the financial gain that could be had there um but from the developer standpoint as someone who is kind of genuinely interested um in understanding more about like you know the whole nft process and you know how all of that functioned at a technical level i just wanted to you know just keep learning keep learning more and more um you know from how smart contracts are written how the tokens are distributed to minters you know how does the metadata hook up to everything and pretty much everything that kind of fell under that one specific category 
And, you know, obviously when you go into learning about all these different processes um, and understanding how they're intertwined, you do a lot of research, right? And, um, you know, when you're in such an emerging space, the documentation isn't that great. And there's not a lot of reference materials that you can read about. I, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, specifically within that niche, right? You know, if you Google a problem that you need to solve with like JavaScript, you can go on Stack Overflow and you'll find like thousands of different answers to the same question. But if you do something similar with Solidity, like there's, there's just not a lot of information out there. So I remember jumping onto Google and spending like a few hours just researching that, trying to get a better understanding of Merkle trees and what they were and you know how they function specifically in an, in an NFT context. And I couldn't find anything. I could not find one specific article that said, this is what Merkle trees are. This is how they're used in a smart contract for NFT minting. It's just like a huge rabbit hole. So I spent a couple of hours researching uh, Merkle trees in general. And then, you know, once I had that, you know, foundational knowledge, I started going through the open Zeppelin documentation. Uh, once I understood that, I started implementing it and I got it working within a smart contract. And, um, you know, once I finished up that whole process, um, I kind of said to myself, like, you know, this is this is really good. But the chances are that I'm going to remember this is pretty slim, like pretty much non-existent. Like I would probably come back to it in like a month from now and be like, yeah. how, how, how do I do that again? Yeah, um, exactly. So, yeah. So I went back and I said to myself, you know what, I should probably document this just so that, you know, I can reference it for later and get a better understanding how to re-implement it, so to speak. And you have helped, so, helped millions of people by documenting it, by, by the way, Alan. That, that was a really <laughs> good to see. I, I'm really yeah. thankful about it. Yeah, so I started writing about the whole process so I could refer to it later. And um, pretty much after I finished up the steps that I wrote, I was like, oh, I may as well turn it uh, into an article because they usually say, right, the best way to learn something is to teach someone else. I finished up, I converted the notes into an article, I posted it on Medium and um, within like the first couple of weeks, it didn't get much traction. But then like, you know, when NFTs really started to boom and it was a really common search term on Google and then there's just a lot of interest in the space, I started getting a lot of views on it, uh, which is really cool. And um, I think probably the best part about it was having, you know, all these people who I'd never met before, never spoken about, didn't even know who they were. You know, they were messaging me on Twitter saying, oh, you know, thanks for documenting that. Like, it really helped me understand the concept. It, I mean, you, you deserve a clap for this. Uh, it, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I mean it's, it's, it's amazing because I was doing the same thing. I was trying to search for Merkle Tree and uh, your blog post was the first, I think, that came up in, on Google. I think yeah. even now, if you type in Merkle Tree whitelist, it's still the first search result, which is pretty cool. And if, if you search deeper, I think you end up uh, actually uh, finding the inventor. His name is Merkle. Have you come across his YouTube videos as well? Um, I don't think so. Oh, actually, I think I remember while I was researching the article, I found one video from a dude on Open Zeppelin, but I think it was in a lazy minting context. But yeah, no, like there was a lot of like, you know, bits and pieces of yeah. information out there. So all I kind of did was, you know, just kind of co combined everything together. I, I think it, it, it's a piece of art the way you have written it. And it's so like descriptive uh, and anybody can like go read and understand it very easily. Have you been writing things before? Like how, how, how did you write it in such a beautiful way? That's, that's what I'm trying to understand. Previously before that article, like I'd, I'd never really written anything, you know, back in the day when I used to like write reports and stuff like that in like, you know, uni or whatever. It was kind of like, I would always spend a lot of time rereading what I've written. And like, when I say I spent a lot of time, it was just making sure that everything was like in very easy to di uh, to digest manner. Once I finished with that report, I was like, you know, this is pretty simple. You don't need a technical understanding. So um, no, it's good to see that I hit that uh, that kind of outcome with the, with the article. Especially Actually, uh, I think uh, one of the unique styles uh, that, that uh, I, I find in your writing is using memes <laughs> with, 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 with actual knowledge. So yeah. it, it's, it's not completely boring. Like you're just not reading just text, 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 text. It's a combination yeah. of fun and reading. So I, I really enjoyed it. When I was writing that article, the last thing that I wanted to do was just include like, you know, just slabs of text because realistically nobody likes reading slabs of text especially on a topic that they're, they're trying to understand and i'm glad that it, it gave off that that vibe
<laughs> it, it it did it did definitely so i i have been looking at uh, your blog post and recently i noticed you did another one on ecdsa signatures what what yep. what is that what what is ecdsa so for those um, that are listening that don't know what ecdsa is it stands for elliptical curve digital signature algorithm um i personally only understand it at a high level in relation to you know if i wanted to implement this for like a project or like within a smart contract how would i go about doing it So if you wanted like a deep technical explanation of how it works, I definitely recommend googling it. <laughs> <laughs> But in terms of like usage uh specifically related to like solidity, the way it works is that it usually takes in some form of byte data that has been hashed according to the Ethereum signed message um specification. What you usually do is you sign that byte data with a private key of an Ethereum account. And upon signing that data, you produce a signature. And then you can actually use the signature and that uh you know hash that you derived earlier form some form of mathematical computation on it to actually recover the public key or the address the wallet that signed that message nice so what happens after you sign the message like for example there are like two ends to it right so i was looking at the crypto bats project and they had signature being generated on the service side and in the smart contract there was a verification happening i, I wonder if, if if you have gone into uh, those details like how how is it actually implemented like if i'm creating an nft project so, how do i use it so what a lot of projects do is because if you pass in a hash and a signature you can recover the signing address so what a lot of projects will do is they'll actually replicate that hash on chain um using kekak256 and um they'll typically turn that into an ethereum sign message as i said before like on chain and then depending on the way that that hash is derived you can actually guarantee that valid input data that's been provided to the function so like typically just to start over you'll 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 have some like minting function where you might pass in a couple of parameters and then those parameters that are passed in will be used to derive um the hash and then you can recover um the signing address from that hash using a signature that's typically been passed in as well nice so basically after recovering you you can verify is this the same address or not or what whatever yeah. is uh, yeah so very nice what what um what most project owners will do is they'll have some constant variable uh, they'll have some variable uh within the smart contract which will be the signing address and that's just an address that they can set and then obviously when you do the computation to recover the signing address you just compare the two and if they match that means that it's a valid signature amazing so we are all interested in gas over here alan like uh, i i i just want to understand <laughs> like how how can i save uh gas when i'm writing smart contracts or minting from the smart contract if i'm given an option with uh, of like using merkle tree or this ECD essay what should i choose like and what what are the benefits i i don't understand that i think the debate of which is better merkle trees versus signatures um is completely dependent on the context that you're using them for there's a dude on twitter his name's jeffrey shoals and apologies if i butchered the pronunciation of his name but this guy is like a wizard and he's actually written uh, a couple very good medium articles one of which actually compared the two and uh one of his findings was actually that dependent on the amount of addresses included in your whitelist i think if it was under 1300 or 1200 addresses it was actually more gas efficient to use merkle trees if it was under that um you know amount of addresses and then anything over that you would use signatures um but to answer your question of you know when you would use uh one or the other I think in terms of public minting you would never use a merkle tree uh mainly because of the fact that merkle trees are typically static by design so typically people tend to opt for signatures um in that sort of sense um but don't get it don't get it twisted I think that both implementations are great the difference in gas unless your merkle tree is like absurdly large I think it's better for a developer to obviously go with what they're comfortable with because you don't want to be forcing yourself to use signatures because you can save a little bit of gas but you really don't have an understanding of how that you know underlying tech works so then you run the risk of you know your developer implementing it incorrectly and then we all know how fun smart contract vulnerabilities are it it is very fun like i i have had my fair share of like fun with the smart contract so i i, I can completely yeah. relate to it <laughs> <laughs> and and as as a developer myself i would always vote for readability and understanding rather than uh complexity yes. and low gas so i i i'm completely with you on that so thank you so yes, much for yes i agree um share, I, sharing that information uh, okay so you mentioned uh jeff right yep. so that 
I, I believe that's one of your inspirations in in this NFT space. Who else, like who who else do you like look look up to or uh, get get inspiration from? I think I think for me, you know, when I first got into the space, obviously you don't know where to begin just because there's such a, an abundance of like, you know, different pieces of information from like so many different people. Um, but for me, when I first got into the space, I think Extreme Tom, uh, which is one of the Cool Cats lead developers, um, he actually published an article called What I Learned From Making Cool Cats. This article was the article that basically put me onto the gas optimization rabbit hole. He was definitely, you know, another big inspiration uh, when it came to not only just being a better developer, but in terms of like, you know, documenting um, the process as well, because he did publish a couple uh, really good Medium articles. Um, I think Tom Hurst as well, um, back before, you know, we had ERC-721A, he published a really informative article about ERC-721 plus counters. In terms of that, there's probably another dude uh, that I started following recently called Transmission11, and um, he just, wizard like absolute wizard he, he really like pushes gas optimization to the limits and um he often tweets about his findings and stuff as well i think last but not least probably alphabet soup um which is actually a guy that you know um i met because he posted a bug report on something he's a white hat very knowledgeable in the space and you know he's helped me out with a couple of things so shout out to him as well um but yeah those people are people i would say you know have really good uh dev alpha <laughs> That, that's amazing and thank you so much for sharing your inspirations uh, i'm sure like we will all try to look up to those people and try to learn and get better at what we're doing especially right now efficient smart contracts uh, so yeah definitely definitely I, I don't want to put you on the spot but this is a, another question like do you, do you have any any message uh for for the viewers like an, anything you want to share with them i think i think one thing to note is I want to make it clear that I'm no expert. Like I have a very good understanding. I think uh, when it comes to, you know, being a developer, especially in a space like this, is that everything's changing very rapidly. And, you know, you obviously need to keep learning. Like once you start off with writing like your first NFT minting contract and it's like, all right, that's cool. But now I need to write, you know, how do I write a staking contract? Or if you want to start looking into DeFi in those areas, like, okay, how would I write like a basic protocol and stuff like that? So I think the key is to, you know, always, always stay, uh, you know, motivated to keep learning more and more. So I think it's to it's a good idea to you know find what the 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 one specific niche in the space that you want to like absolutely smash stay focused on it and then once you feel like you're adept in that um, specific niche move on to the next thing and you know just don't stop just keep just keep learning that's a very beautiful message thank you so much Ellen thank you for joining us and sharing all this information how do people like reach you if they want to contact you for interviews or questions or maybe projects <laughs> if they want to hire you how, how, how do they contact you at the moment because uh, I'm still getting my website built you can just hit me up on Twitter it's Kazo the I in it is actually not a capital uh, it's not an I it's actually a lowercase L because I couldn't get the original Twitter handle <laughs> um, so that's LTS and then CU double Z so you can hit me up on there and um, you know if you ever want to check out uh, you know what articles I've written you can always follow me on my medium which is the exact same username but it's actually a capital I this time you can follow me on those uh, two channels amazing thank you so much Alan let's keep it here hopefully uh, we will have more questions from the viewers I will read out those questions to you as, as I as I get if there, there are like lots of questions and we can't answer them like on comments uh, would you be available to do another follow-up yeah definitely i think that'd be great hopefully between now and then i learn a lot more and i have a lot more value to give out that's amazing thank you perfect thank you so much man i appreciate you having me okay bye see you later so i hope you enjoyed the video the main point was for us all to learn and grow together and that is the main objective of the recently started company called hashtag holding so hashtag holding has sponsored this video and i want you to go and give them a follow on Twitter, the Twitter handle is hashtag holding and their website is hashtag holding.io. They have also got a Discord which is linked on their website. So make sure you go and join their Discord as well. Thank you for watching.